to the fighters calling out Israel Adesanya. So who called him out? Paulo Costa and Weidman. Chris Weidman said, I didn't pay... Oh, no, this is what uh, Adesanya said about Chris Weidman. I didn't pay any mind to Chris Weidman saying I'm overrated. Okay, why? Because he built, beat Silva a little more handily than I did. I'm overrated. Interesting. I could say the same thing about him. Heavily. Yeah. When I get this belt in my next fight, they can all line up and they can all find out how overrated I am. Well, Ooh. what do you I, think about that? Because here's words. the thing. Overrated isn't really a knock. It's not. All it's saying is the general consensus is that he's God's gift and it's sort of unproven. It's not even saying that he's not. All it's saying is that right now he's being rated further than he really is. And to be honest with you, I think that's sort of not up for debate. I mean, he's getting a title shot, you know, coming off of, you know, Silva was the the most impressive win of his career and it wasn't a super impressive win. Um, not many people are getting title shots off of beating Anderson Silva. That's not, he's not really the gatekeeper of the division. Um, there's a lot of other, uh, guys that are sort of there that you'd kind of go like, oh shit, you know, I don't know. He might have some trouble with. So I understand the overrated thing, but I don't know. It's almost like Connor. I said, Connor was overrated when he got his title shot and he didn't really have many crazy big fights. It was Chad Mendes, I believe was his, uh, the, the big tough fight. And then he got the title shot off of. German guy, Chad Mendes. Dennis Seaver. Oh, oh Dennis, Dennis Seaver. Dennis Seaver, yeah. Who was never in yeah, contention so, for a title. No, no, absolutely. And you're right in what you say, but also there's a, the other side to it. You're absolutely correct in what you say there, right? You beat Dennis Seaver, but you've got to look at the body of work prior to it that paints the whole picture. It's easy to sit there and say Dennis Seaver or even with Israel against Anderson. It's easy to say, well, that fight, you shouldn't get a title shot based on that. But if you look at Connor's body of work leading into that, beating everybody handily, stopping them all in like the first or second rounds. Yeah. And then on top of that, the the interest that he and also Israel are also making, the splash and the impact in the UFC. Yeah. People are talking about him, becoming a fan favorite, putting on good fights, entertaining style, the excellent it factor. on the microphone, massively charismatic, the it factor, as you say. You put all that together, and then on top of that, they deliver in the fights while the individual fights together aren't enough to get them a title shot. When you put it all together and you look at the body of work and then the fact that the UFC needs stars and Israel is a star mm. in the making, I mean, he is a star now. He is a star. Also, he will star will only get bigger if he can win his next fight and become the champion. But that's the big if. So uh, I hear what you're saying. Overrated isn't really... Um, an insult. In fact, I spoke about it on the Joe Rogan. I think I said it on here. I think when I said I wasn't sold on Israel Adesanya, I think uh, he, he um, Israel said something. You know, he responded on social media or something. I forget what it was. I think it was on a story or something. But uh, I wasn't saying anything bad about Israel Adesanya. I was just saying I wasn't sure. When he beat Derek Brunson, Derek Brunson was a shadow of himself. He wasn't aggressive like he normally is. And Israel went out there, beat him, beat him in style, absolutely flawless victory, looked incredible. So it's not a knock on him. It's not a knock on him. I'm just saying yeah. it's a knock on his opponent. You know, what is he supposed to do? Go out there and win fights in style. He's been doing that. And he beat Anderson Silva in style. Listen, could it have been more action packed? Could there have been more action? Could it have been a bit more dominant? Yeah, maybe. But at the end of the day, he got a win over one of the greatest of all time. Of and that still stands to his test. And then prior to that, Derek Brunson, and then the list goes on and on. So he's had some big wins. Or when you look at the body of work, and there is no other contenders. All right, there's Gastelum right now. He's going to be, he is the number one contender. And then who's next? Jack Ray just got beat. Chris Wyman just got beat off Jack Ray, but Jack Ray lost a few before that to Whitaker and Gastelum. Uh, uh, Wideman, you know, he's calling out Anderson Silva for a third match. That's an interesting fight. I think people would want to see that. There's a throwback element to that fight. Hmm. Um, but next in line, realistically, when you look at it, is Israel Adesanya because the middleweight division right now is in a weird situation. You go back a couple of years ago, there was myself, Rockhold, uh, Whitaker, Gastelum, Chris Weidman, Jack Array, Romero, uh, Mashida, Romero, Musasi. You know, yeah. it was. It was a fucking dangerous landscape. Now, you know, not so much. Yeah, I mean, the, the middleweight division, I remember back in the day, was really thin. When Rich Franklin was the champion and Anderson came in, it was such a such a thin division. There was, like, nobody there. I mean, 
Travis Luter won the Ultimate Fighter and got a title shot against Anderson Silva. It was like they were. It was like slim pickings for Anderson, and Anderson was just killing everybody. And then, literally, right when you became champion, it exploded, and it was just like murder after murder after murderer. Um, so yeah, look, I I'm not. It's not a knock on Israel Adesanya because I I'm just saying that. I don't have the data to go like, oh, my God, this is the next fucking coming of Christ um, because I, you don't really know. The UFC is obviously taking a gamble on him, and they take the gamble. Sometimes it works. Conor McGregor, they said, okay, we're going to push this guy. They made him a star. They know, and it's, it's happening with Israel right now. They see that he has all the makings of a star. He's got to win the title. He's got to win it. That's, he has to follow through on that in order to become that star. Um, and then it's sort of what he does with it from there. But I can't fault the UFC. Definitely can't fault for you can't fault Adesanya for just being undefeated and winning all of his fights in, in spectacular fashion. Shame but on I, him! How I, dare you come in here, <laughs> win fights, keep stay undefeated, and be entertaining and charismatic on the microphone? No, 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 no. We don't stand for Shame. that. No, no, not over here. Shame. Shame, Shame on you for doing so well. <laughs> but you exactly. can't hate what on the set, UFC. What a set of fucking haters we are. Yeah. The guy comes in. When we're sitting here, we're going, no, oh, you know, I mean, when you look at his competition and blah, 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 blah. What a set of fucking assholes. The yeah. fucking poor guy grew up in, where, Nigeria, I think. Obviously, probably wasn't a bed of roses. Moves to New Zealand. Makes something of himself. Goes on a stellar kickboxing fucking run. Uh, some like, I, I don't know what it was, but he won most of his fights. Transitions to MMA. And he's been undefeated ever since. He's had five or six wins in the UFC. Beaten some names. Beaten, uh, what's his face, the Hawaiian guy. Uh, the uh, Brad Tavares, mm. then he beats uh, Brunson, then he beats Anderson Silva, and it's still not good enough. We're still going, oh, yeah, but he doesn't really deserve it. Shame, you know, shame on us. Shame on us. And Israel Adesanya, we formally apologize. We sound like little bitches, Lewis. We I'm sound like little bitches. I'm not, I never, I apologize for what? We didn't do anything. We didn't say anything. We didn't shit on him. I, I, Sliding. I'm saying that the the fan base sort of saying that he's overrated. I understand where they're coming from, but you have to understand the UFC's perspective where they have to gamble and make stars. It works sometimes, but then it doesn't work. You look at, uh, what's his name? Fuckface with the spiky hair and the abs. Fuckface, uh, Sage Northcott. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually a very good description. Yeah. So he's the guy, you know, where they also tried. They were like, cool, we'll bring him along too. They do that. They start to plant these seeds and they're like, this is going to be the next star. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they fucking slip the commentators a little bit of cash. You'll be able to give us some insight on that eventually to say, oh, this is the next, this is the next big thing. Because anytime Rogan says it, I'm like, uh, uh, Rogan just said, this is the next guy. Listen. Listen, let me tell you this right now. I've only commentated once for the UFC, but I've been around the production for long enough. Trust me. They do not slip you a bit of cash and say, hey, say some nice things about this guy, okay? <laughs> Pulling the curtain back, there's nothing to pull back, okay? Gonna, that, does, that does not happen, Lewis. You're going to tell me that Mike Goldberg wasn't slipped an envelope to say this is the Machida era. The Machida era has arrived. Bro. It looked like the Machida era had arrived. He knocked out Shogun. He was on a tear. He was beating people in style. He knocked out Rashad, you know, and, and he did it in a traditional form of karate, okay, which is a throwback. And nobody thought it would work. You know, shame on you, Lewis. One shame. more. My word. You are saying that the UFC are paying off their commentators and their uh, uh, broadcasting partners to hype people up. Sorry, I will not stand for this. I'm going to start some conspiracy theories. You don't even know. It's over. Circle of trust. Circle it, of trust. It, you're going to get me fired is what you're going to do. <laughs> the, 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 the shitty websites are going to say, Michael Bisping says on confirms. his podcast. Yeah. You know, com- yeah, confirms Lewis's wild allegations, yeah. which uh, is not the case. Uh, but but no. Um, we so got yeah, to well, we wrap in about seven, eight minutes or so. So if we want to get a couple of video questions, now's the time, Mr. Bisping. All right. All right. Well, let's let's fucking do it. Let's go. Uh, Harrington, pull up some video questions. He's coming back in a second. Also, I'll tell you right now, we're going to be in Toronto March 10th uh, doing a, a sort of live version of the podcast. Michael Bisping's one man show. I'm doing some stand up as well. Uh, Toronto March 10th. Tickets are still on sale going very fast. Um, I'm actually going to be in Ticketmaster.com. You're going to be in Toronto this weekend. I Sunday. see making your uh, oh, Sunday, Sunday. Nice, nice. 
Ooh, I was going to say debut. I didn't know you'd been there, Mr. Fancy Pants Comedian. Uh, but yeah, uh, at the Great Hall Toronto, check it out. I'll be talking about my life inside and out. Me and Luce will be busting each other's balls and hopefully entertaining you all. Uh, Ticketmaster.com, March 10th, Toronto. Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. All right, guys, today's show is brought to you by Victory Barber. Victory Barber is a truly classic grooming line created for men by internationally renowned barber, Matty Conrad. Every product is made with quality ingredients and award-winning fragrances to create a line that stands out from the pack in both performance and presence. Victory Barber and Brand has created a compact and comprehensive styling range for any man to create versatile styling regardless of the hair type. Now, I've been using this a lot. I love it. Thank you for the free samples. And when the samples are gone, I will be buying it. They offer a variety of products. Whatever kind of hairstyle you've got or that you wish to achieve, they have the right product for you. All products are made in the USA. All formulas are cruelty and paraben free. And of course, if you Google them, you'll see they have a wide variety of products, which we are going to give you a great offer. If you go to victorybarber.com, use the promo code BYM15, you will get 15% off your initial order. Face creams, hair creams, hair gels, you name it, these guys do it. Victorybarber.com, use the promo code BYM15, 15% off.